So, Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm very happy to rise to speak to Motion 511 as brought forward by the member from Banff Cochrane. Now, on the surface, this motion seems fairly innocuous. Everyone wants to protect public lands, and water security is extremely important. I think we can all agree to that. However, the concern of our caucus and Albertans beyond these walls is that unintended consequences are once again quite reliably rearing their ugly head. While I expect that the member has the best intentions in mind, and I truly believe that, uh, there are serious impli impl implications if the government starts to go down a road such as this. And that's because a motion uh, such as this, if acted upon and turned into government policy, could have serious implications for the mining of metallurgical coal in Alberta. This is because the eight metallurgical coal projects in Alberta are primarily along the eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains. And I'm sure everyone in this house and beyond knows that there's a huge difference between metallurgical coal and thermal coal at, at the feet of which this government lays many societal ills. Metallurgical coal is used in steel making and is a significant export product sold around the world to economies that are growing and urbanizing at an increasingly rapid rate. And ironically enough, because metallurgical coal is needed to make steel, it's also needed to make wind turbines, which this government would so desperately like to see in every field across Alberta. Now, these eight metallurgical coal projects on the eastern slopes have the potential to generate between 10 and $13 billion in government revenue. Now, along with these dollars, which are obviously significant, these projects are able to directly employ between three and 4,000 people. And there's a, a potential for an additional eight to 12,000 in direct jobs as well. So like so many Albertans who care about both the economy and the environment at the same time, you know, I feel that we can balance these by enforcing very strict environmental standards, while also creating the jobs that Albertans so desperately need now and on an ongoing basis. Mr. Speaker, these are thousands of good mortgage-paying jobs, and these projects often form the main source of direct and indirect employment in their respective communities. And I, I just wonder if the member has taken the opportunity to speak with any of the companies which mine metallurgical coal or perhaps the Coal Association of Canada to inquire about the impacts this motion potentially has on their operations. And I'm wondering this. I wonder, if, member, what is not currently being done that the member would like to be seeing done going into the future? I know that companies that work in headwater regions are already subject, as they should be, to very stringent regulations, sets of them. Uh, which govern how they're allowed to operate in these areas. So by stating that government should increase its efforts to conserve and manage public lands, the member is, is clearly calling into question what is being done at this moment in time. So has the member indeed consulted with the Ministry of the Environment? Because I would have thought that this would have been within her purview to act upon this already within regulations currently set. What additional steps need to be made that are not already being made? I think we need to know that. We all want to protect the water. Again, Alberta has very strict environmental regulations. Albertans expect that, and they have every right to, Mr. Speaker. So I am, interest in, I am interested to know what additional actions the member is calling for and what specific problems he is looking to, to remedy. Because if there are instances of comprised water quality, Albertans already expect that the Department of Environment and Parks is doing everything that is in their power, and they have great powers, to remedy these situations already. Now, these individuals, which up until May 2015 included an individual who's now a Minister of the Crown, if I'm not mistaken, they do great work. That's an honest, sincere compliment. And I have the deepest of confidence in their abilities, as I had confidence in, the, in their abilities when they were with the previous government, to take action when it was needed and to suggest po policy and legislative changes when they were deemed necessary. So in closing, Mr. Speaker, this motion definitely 
credit where credit is due, well intended. But it, the problem is that it has potential to prevent the creation of thousands of jobs in Alberta at a time when our province desperately needs them while respecting the environment with the regulations that are already in place. Metallurgical coal, as I've said, is, is required around the world, especially in economies uh, that are growing at an accelerated rate, and this motion has the potential to cut all of that off at the knees, selling a high-quality product into a market that already has an increasing level of demand. So that is nonsensical in my understanding, Mr. Speaker, and when I say the word redundant, it is not meant as an insult at all, but uh, some would say the motion is redundant because there is all sorts of great work that's already being done by ministry officials with the capacities that they already possess. So for these reasons and more, Mr. Speaker, the motion falls short. I can't support it. I, I encourage all other members of this assembly to vote against it and do something different and better on a different occasion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.